Hi, this is Judith Karakshani, Ravi Kuteti, Mohamed Hamada, and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 165 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of hemodynamic collapse during CTO PCI. The patient presented with angina that was refractory to medical treatment. She did have an angiogram a few months prior that showed a single vessel coronary disease with a CTO of the right coronary artery. An attempt was made to recanalize the RCA that was unsuccessful. The ejection fraction was normal, and because of that refractory angina, the patient was referred for a second attempt of CTO PCI. This is the initial angiogram demonstrating an occlusion of the distal right coronary artery. There was no significant disease into the left coronary system. that was providing mainly epicardial collaterals, filling the posterior lateral, the right posterior lateral, and the right PDA. So what we have is a CTO of the right with a clear proximal cap, length of about 30 millimeters, good quality distal vessel, and mainly epicardial collaterals from the lady and the circumflex. Although often in cases like this, there are also invisible septals that could potentially be crossed during retrograde attempts from the LAD. As a result, the plan here was to start with undergrade wire escalation, then switch to undergrade dissection reentry, and third option would be retrograde via surfing septal collaterals from the LAD. We were planning to obtain femoral radial access, however, there was significant spasm in the right radial artery, and bilateral femoral access was used. We then had significant difficulty engaging the right coronary artery. Then Amplatch 1, 8 French guide, uh, caused significant dampening and was removed. And then we wired the RCA, we engaged the right coronary artery with a 7 French AL1 guide catheter and used a workhorse guide wire. However, unfortunately, the first injection demonstrates that we have an osteal dissection of the right coronary artery. This is a significant change in plans because now that we have dissected from the osteum, it is often very hard or even impossible to advance undergrade wires into the proximal trilumen. So the plan changes into using undergrade dissection reentry and retrograde. Another approach could be to just let the right coronary artery recover and have the patient return for another attempt. We tried other workhorse guide wires, but they cannot enter into the trilumen. The subminimal position of the guide wire was confirmed by intravascular ultrasound. The true lumen is actually compressed at 2 to 3 o'clock, and the IVUS catheter and the guide wire are located into the subintimal space. Now, we also notice here that there is um, a compression of the true lumen, which could potentially make re entry very challenging, which was indeed the case, as we'll see shortly. Here is the true lumen, here is the subintimal space. So once again, large subintimal space making the entry into the true lumen quite challenging. We de uh, delivered a stingray balloon to the distal RCA and did multiple re-entry attempts using the double blind stick and swap technique with the Gaia 3rd and the Pilot 200. And the wire unfortunately seemed to be knuckling instead of freely moving distally. Eventually, the wire moved more distally, but we were not fully satisfied with the movement of the guide wire. And uh, IVUS was performed demonstrating a subintimal position uh, of the guide wire. As a result, we decided to change to retrograde. We used a careful microcatheter, filtered XTR and SU3, and performed surfing through various septal collaterals. But uh, unfortunately, the guide wires would not cross into the PDA. We repeated surfing using a Xeon Black guide wire. This wire is often very useful for uh, septal collaterals that are uh, invisible. It did uh, go through different routes, but uh, eventually, after retracting and advancing with slight rotation, uh, the wire seemed to be taking a more favorable course. Here is still not moving in the right direction. The wire was moved back again, and um, 
redirected and then eventually it seems to be going into the distal vessel however it's going under grade instead of retrograde it was pulled back and redirected and eventually it is now coursing retrograde in the course of the right coronary artery we had a lot of difficulty delivering the caravel and as a result we decided to make an attempt for retrograde crossing as this seemed to be a short CTO and actually we were able to advance the retrograde CO black all the way to the proximal right coronary artery and then we were able to advance it inside the guide catheter. We then trapped the retrograde guide wire and tried to advance the caravel but this was not possible and as a result what we did is the T-pin technique we advanced an undergrade Corsair microcatheter that was advanced over the retrograde guide wire and then that uh, enabled crossing of the right coronary artery into the undergrade direction. This is the undergrade Corsair coming down and then that can be sometimes tricky but um, often the microcatheter can go over the undergrade wire and then uh, here is the entrance of the wire into the Corsair and then after doing that the Corsair was delivered down to the right coronary artery and then a workhorse wire was inserted in the undergrade direction the right coronary was predilated and then stented with uh, various uh, dry eluting stents all the way from the distal RCA to the ostium but unfortunately it appeared that despite going retrograde we still have a dissection in the right posterior lateral vessel what we did is uh, deliver another microcatheter into the right posterior lateral and then uh, did the star technique essentially and that uh, uh, restored flow into the posterior lateral. We then placed another stent to cover the proximal right coronary artery but at this point the patient became agitated and restless and developed hypotension. This was the baseline hemodynamics and then here's the patient now with ST segment depressions as well as significant hypotension which progressed into bradycardia and essentially cardiac arrest requiring CPR followed by ventricular fibrillation. So we clearly have a significant change in condition at this point the patient became agitated and actually we lost the guide position at this point due to patient's movements and uh, the patient was intubated and then placed emergently on VA ECMO with a 25 French uh, common femoral vein cannula and a 19 French arterial cannula and then the patient could be successfully defibrillated. What is the cause of this hemodynamic deterioration? We did have an acceptable result at the right coronary artery when this happened but then it all became clear when we performed another injection on the left main and what was found is that the left main had a dissection. Fortunately, unlike the right coronary artery, we were able to advance workhorse guide wires into both the LAD and the circumflex, and then uh, predilated and stented with a 3.0 drag eluting stent from the left main into the LAD, which then uh, resulted in restoration in undergrade flow, and now we have a pulse pressure. We perform the proximal optimization technique. We now have excellent flow. There is still some residual disease in the LAD that was covered with another drug eluting stent. And then a nice final result was achieved with Timothy flow into the left main. And this is the right coronary artery that also had good undergrade flow. At this point, we decided to not do additional PCI into the vessel. The patient uh, was subsequently decannulated, required surgical repair of a hematoma but her ejection fraction five days later was normal without wall motion abnormalities and she was discharged home two weeks later. There are several potential lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, when there is a dissection upon engaging the vessel sometimes undergrade dissection and re-entry can be used to re-enter into the distal lumen but when that fails retrograde is another option it worked in our case, although there was still some distal subintimal wire location. Donor vessel dissection, which was the left main in our case, can be a potentially lethal complication. 
And that is why it is important to have a safety wire into the donor vessel, which we did have in our case. But when the patient became hypotensive and restless, had movements of her lower extremities, removing the guide catheter, and then went into cardiac arrest. When cardiac arrest happens, then VA ECMO is a potential solution that can stabilize the patient, support both oxygenation as well as perfusion, and allow, first of all, determining what the problem is, which was left main dissection in this particular case, as well as a successful treatment by stenting the left main and supporting the patient. Thank you.